Howdy, it's Jim Morato. It is December 2020, maybe around the 10th or the 11th, I can't remember exactly. And we are driving through one of my favorite areas on the planet, Utica, Kentucky. And this is just a nice little town. I've got a ton of connections to this area. A lot of friends that uh, used to live here. I'm sure there's some friends that still live there, but most of, um, I had family that lived out here for a while. Most of them have moved away. I went to school here for kindergarten through fifth grade at Utica Elementary School. And that, that's actually what I wanted to talk about most on this video. Decided to drive through here as, as we were driving around the other day and just, uh, yeah, I just really remember this place. This place has a very, very special spot in my heart. <laughs> but I, I mostly mostly wanted to talk about the place I know the most, the school. And we'll, we'll be driving by the school here shortly. And it looks a whole lot different than it did when I went there. You, you may or may not know. It's, uh, it's a defunct school. It's no longer... I guess there is no longer a Utica Elementary School. And it, it actually closed up shop, I want to say 10 years ago. Uh, I might give or take a couple years. I might be way off on that. It looks like a local, I, I assume maybe a local farmer has bought it. I, I don't really know anything about it. But obviously, most of the school has been knocked down. Looks like the gym is still there at the moment. Yeah, and there's, there's lots of work vehicles parked around there and all that. But I have some really, really good memories of going to the school there. I, you know, when I was looking around, I thought, surely I've got some photos from, from my childhood inside of that school. And I, I do not. I don't have a single photo from inside of that school. If, if you know where any are, let me know. I'd sure love to see them. Surely somebody's put up a website or something. Yeah, but that place is really special to me, and I just wanted to, to mention some of the reasons that it was special and, and why I love it so much. Even now, it's it's always nice to drive back out there. And, you know, even that small little community of Utica has changed quite a bit from what I remember. You know, and it, it's it's funny. You, you, you probably experienced this, too. I think in my mind, I can remember just about every kid I went to school with. I remember their names... I remember the teachers, you know, and most most of my memories are just super fond, happy, good times. You know, I just, just remember having really good times at that school. And I still, you know, I still have my class photos that everybody has. And if you know me, you know that uh, my head is kind of large. And looking at my old kindergarten picture, I swear my ear span is, is uh, wider than my shoulder span. Just kind of one of those funny things. Every time I look at that picture, I just think, man, I had a big head. But yeah, I remember all of my, my teachers and my classmates really well. You know, I remember uh, Miss Hobbs, Miss Thompson, Miss Matthews, Miss Sherman, uh, Mr. Tanner. Just just remember a lot of those teachers. They Miss McClure was one of the helpers we had. She was a really sweet lady. And just, just everybody was great. Oh yeah, and the librarian was Miss Evans, and I, I thought really highly of her too. We had a library club when I was going to school, and man, I just I loved that. And libraries have always been special to me, and I, I read a ton. I probably read about a book a week, and it all started at Utica. One of the things we did at library club is we made dust jackets for a book. Like you drew a picture, and then you made a nice dust jacket for for just a random book in the library and i remember making a dust jacket i believe it was for a book called the home run kid and i've tried to look that book up on uh, amazon and other places and i cannot find a copy of it you know it must have been written in the 70s possibly 80s or very early 80s and there's there's been some more recent books about home runs and baseball players and that sort of thing but that specific book I can't find a copy of, but I made a dust jacket for that book. And, you know, of course I always wondered, eh, when did that book finally leave the library? 
You know, I mean, in the 90s, did they get a whole bunch of new books and toss that one out? Was it thrown out in the garbage? Was it sold in a book sale? Yeah, I just kind of wonder what happened to the books in the library. What happened to the card catalog? You know, those were, uh, the card catalogs were pretty special at one time. And eh, just that's just one of those thoughts I have to myself. You know, I remember my first day going into kindergarten. It was me and my mom, my aunt Joanne, and my cousin Jerry. And I just, I remember, I remember my first day of kindergarten. And in kindergarten, I remember if you were good that whole week, they had a pirate chest. We were the Utica Pirates. And they had a pirate chest, which was a, I believe, a cardboard box that the teacher kind of wrapped in aluminum foil. It was pretty cool. But you could, uh, you could get something out of the pirate box, the pirate chest, you know, the treasure chest. And there were usually, like, um, not baseball cards, but, like, you know, there would be, um, you know, non-sports cards in that treasure box. And I'd, I'd always try to get those. I remember getting some Grease, you know, from the movie Grease. I remember getting some of those trading cards out of that box. And there were little toys and trinkets and stuff like that, but it was just a, just a good, good memory. I also remember if, you know, and if you were in Utica very much, they had a playground that was Indian themed or Native American themed, if you like. Obviously, it was a very politically incorrect playground. We we didn't think of it that way, though, back in the 80s. But they had a teepee, you know, that was kind of like monkey bars. You could kind of go over there and climb on it and swing around on it. It was pretty cool. Then there were two horses on like a seesaw kind of thing. And there was a totem pole kind of um, slide that was really cool. And it was just just a lot of fun. And that playground was there. Man, they, they had that playground there forever. I remember passing by it. Well, my time's getting a little distorted. But I remember driving by eh, in the last decade or so and seeing it. Oh, and up through here, we're going through, um, I believe, the living area. I had a cousin, my late cousin Matt, used to live kind of in this area. And I've spent a lot of time right through here. I had some friends that went to Utica. The Scott brothers, Jason and Wesley, I have no idea where they are now. But they were good guys, and we had a lot of fun, and they lived in this area too. Just another happy memory. Not, you know, well, school-related, but uh, of, of this area in particular. Uh, and speaking of Indians, we read, I remember, I was probably in the third or fourth grade, and we read the book, The Indian in the Cupboard. And I love that book. That's still a great book. Of course, it's it's getting, um, it's had some criticism lately, again, for not being politically correct, but I, I thought it was a great book and a lot of fun. And it's, you know, one of my favorite books from childhood. I went back, um, probably in the last year or two, I went and found all the sequels to The Indian in the Cupboard. And I read them as an adult. And they were not as good as the original. <laughs> they were still good. They were fun. But, you know, it gets kind of carried away after a while. It goes from putting a little Indian doll in a uh, box to make it come alive to... It gets into some time travel and some other kind of crazy stuff. And it's still fun books. But the original just uh, was so brilliant to me. Another memory I have is when I was a little kid, I remember going into school and it was huge. I swear I remember the, the cafeteria could hold hundreds of kids. Well, probably around 2007, 2008, my buddy Rick's daughter was going to Utica. And he had to go there one night for something. I forget what exactly. But I went with him. He asked me if I wanted to go with him. And I was like, uh, yeah, of course I wanted to go with him. So I went into Utica Elementary School. It was the last. It was the first time I'd been in there, whew, since uh, yeah, since the 80s, and it would be the last time I would ever go in there. And the school seemed so small to me. You know, I remember looking into the cafeteria, and that place, that place, that place might have held 30 kids. It, it did not hold the hundreds and hundreds of screaming kids that I remember. And of course, everything was so low to the ground. Which, uh, it kind of just distorted my memory a little bit, but, but it was still great. 
Oh, and I, I remember too, speaking of books, Mr. Tanner, my third and fifth grade teacher. I remember him giving us a book for Christmas. I forget the name of the book, but it was about some kids who were at a fair and a UFO comes over the fair and somehow they get some special powers. It was a really cool book when you're a kid, but it was like one of the first books I read on my own outside of class. And I thought that was a great gift. Here's a little supermarket up here on the right. We're about to turn by it. Um, just that, that little place has been there for forever. And my cousin Matt actually pumped gas there for a while. Just, just a nice little place. And we are driving up, we're driving up towards the school. And many of these little houses to me are the same as I remember. However, I do remember my old friend Greg Roby used to live at a house right beside the school, and it's not there anymore. By the way, if anybody knows Greg Roby, tell him I'm looking for him. I haven't seen him in forever. He's not on Facebook. I'd sure love to talk to him. We stayed good friends up through high school. But he's, uh, he's fallen off the grid and so has my old friend Charlie Howard, who used to live in this area. If anybody knows how to get a hold of him, let me know. His mom was the postmaster of the Utica Post Office, which has moved. We actually passed it on the left right before that general store a moment ago. But it used to be up ahead. We'll, we'll pass the old one here shortly. And right here on the right, just out of view, where we're, the school is on our right right now, Utica Elementary School. And of course, I mentioned it looks like maybe a farmer has uh, has this area claimed as a a place to do business, so they have it sort of blocked off, which I totally understand. Otherwise, people like me would be driving up all the time checking things out. But yeah, there's uh, that's the gym. That is the gym. And the the rest of the school used to be to the right of it. I remember our school buses would pull up right where I've pulled up here. And drive around to the back and let everybody off in the back. Yeah, so it's it's just not there anymore. And even middle school and high school, the bus would still pick me up at the same spot in our little country home. And then we would go to Utica Elementary School and switch buses. You know, then that bus would take us on into Owensboro to Burns Elementary and Apollo as I got older. And we had the greatest bus driver in the world, a lady named Tootsie. And she was just really, really sweet. And everyone loved her. And I found out through my sister that Tootsie passed away, I want to say, about a, about a year ago. And it broke my heart. She was a wonderful lady. If I would have known she was around, I would have tried to have made an effort to, to get in touch with her. Which, uh, there's a lesson to be learned there if you're thinking about getting in touch with somebody... Uh, make every effort you can to do that. She was replaced by another bus driver who was a nice lady also, but she was no Tootsie. And she couldn't have been another Tootsie. It just was impossible. But she was not as popular as Tootsie. And um, she, uh, yeah, I think she had a bit of a rough time, but she, she was a nice lady too, trying to do what she could. Just everybody loved Tootsie, and you could not replace Tootsie. So there, yeah. That's uh, that's that. There used to be a couple of uh, little general stores up here on the left. I believe the Mackies might have owned one on the left. I, I could be wrong. And it's not there anymore. There is a little store coming up. It used to be railroad tracks right here. The railroad tracks are gone. But I remember railroad tracks. And it's just sad not to see them anymore. And then up here there's a store on the left. And I used to go in there a lot and buy baseball cards. There was a really nice lady that used to run that store back back in the 80s. I can't remember her name, but she was just always nice and friendly. And I remember going in there with my buddy Charlie Howard and buying baseball cards. Oh, I remember uh, at Utica, Utica Elementary School, you'd go in and they would have a supply store that was open. And I think you could get like an eraser or a pencil for a dime. You know, if, if you needed one, and they sold paper. And they also sold, um, you could buy Utica Elementary School Pirate stickers. I want to say for a quarter. And I had a couple of those, and I found one in one of my scrapbooks. I'll put it at the end of this video just so you can get a look at it. But one of the stickers they had painted in a larger form, right um, kind of in the lobby before you went into the gym. And I just remember that really well. 
Yeah, and Charlie, my buddy Charlie Howard, his mom was the postmaster. And one year for my birthday, I've always loved Elvis. And when the Elvis stamps came out, he bought me a sheet. A whole sheet of Elvis stamps. Which, you know, back at that time in this area, you know, that was a fairly generous and nice gift. That railroad track I mentioned, it used to kind of run parallel to this road for a little bit. Kind of here towards the right. And I just remember seeing that train quite a bit. And I remember some kids that I went to school with lived in this area coming up. I believe there were a couple of twin girls that lived in one of these houses. There were a couple of sisters. Uh, I remember one of them was Anita. They lived in one of these houses. My, uh, my sister had a friend named Leanne that lived through here too, and she was just a really sweet kid. So one of my dad's buddies that he used to go hunting with, a guy named Jody Glenn, told me about one of his first hunting trips. He, he, he passed away several, several years ago, and he'd been hunting since well, well before my dad was even thought of. So, I mean, we're probably talking easily 40s kind of time, but he mentioned he remembered hunting in this little field over here to the right. Yeah, geez. I don't want to say getting close to 100 years ago, but probably, you know, 60, 70 years ago anyway at this point. Oh, in the back of the school, the gym. I remember the gym was so wonderful. There was Miss Eggdahl, who was the gym teacher, another wonderfully sweet lady. And, man, I just remember dodgeball was so much fun. I was pretty good at it. I was good at avoiding everything up until the end. I was good at running and keeping away from people, but at the end of the game, I would start getting into it. And I would win dodgeball quite a bit. And I remember Joe Ford who used to kind of run the Owensboro Museum. I remember him coming to the school and uh, telling ghost stories around Halloween. And that was that was pretty cool. I'd, man, I'd love to hear some Joe Ford stories. Please feel free to comment if you know of any Joe Ford stories. That, uh, that guy kind of, kind of had ahead of his time in Owensboro. And, you know, with the school, I kind of, you know, thinking back, I can still visualize a whole lot of the school in my brain like I can still think about the gym and you know going from my third grade classroom down the stairs and going into the gym and then um, going down to the first floor and going into the cafeteria and I mean I, I you know I really had this very clear visual memory of the school yeah it was just a special place it was a good place the teachers I remember like I said were all nice it was a really good place to come up as a kid somewhat sheltered as kids should be i mean it was just it was just a good place there was a lot of you know the bad stuff i learned at burns middle school that was a bad place <laughs> i kid i kid sort of yeah it was middle school before i learned a whole lot of you know the bad stuff you learn as a kid but but utica was just a good good place to come up oh and at the end of uh, your last year at at utica they organized a trip to Land Between the Lakes. I want to say it was like a three or four day weekend kind of trip. It might have just been a couple nights. I can't remember. But it was a lot of fun. And I remember going on that trip and having just a great time. Uh, my cousin Jerry got to go with me. My, you know, my whole class, my whole grade. My cousin Jerry was in my grade with me. They usually put us in different classes. I remember getting to hang out with him there. And it was just a lot of fun. But you had to make a Land Between the Lakes scrapbook, and you got graded on that. And then, you know, at the end of the year, everybody went to Land Between the Lakes. And, you, you know, your teachers were there, and, you know, some of the parents. It was just, just a fun time. And Land, Land Between the Lakes is just a special place anyway. But it was, you know, it was really nice getting to go there with, you know, with this bunch of kids that I'd come up, that I'd come up with at Utica. And I remember these hills kind of going towards my childhood home here. And I remember going over these hills in the bus. And it was so hilly. And it was kind of almost like a roller coaster ride, especially coming up on this next hill. It's not big, but uh, you really felt like you were weightless as you went over this, uh, this hill coming up. And of course, lots of kids, you know, would... Uh, push themselves up on the scene in front of them and basically hit their heads on the ceiling of the bus. I think I did that once or twice. It was pretty fun, but I was too scared to do it more than that. 
one thing too is while I was going to Utica it was kindergarten through sixth grade but they decided to stop at the fifth grade the year that I was in the fifth grade so I did not have the privilege of going to Utica in the sixth grade I, I got to go again I got to go to Burns a year earlier than uh, some of my older friends that was um, I felt ripped off because Utica was such a great place I would have loved to have had one more year there and I could go on and on about my memories but it was just such a great place and this this is that little hill I was talking about when you go over this hill you really ooh, yeah that takes the breath out of you and I've, I've added a couple pictures here I found a picture I can't I want to say maybe from 2014 or so that I've added uh, at the end of this video and it's a just a picture of the yeah there we go that's the high school or the elementary school uh, again maybe from 2012 2013 um, and I do remember there was a sign out front that said thanks for the memories at one point after it closed you can see it's it's blocked by the trees but you can see part of the school over there on the right it actually says AHS on the school or not AHS I believe it's UHS Utica High School because it was a high school before it was an elementary school but they had those nice little uh, basketball courts and playground it was a nice uh, it, it was just great anyway here's one of the stickers this is one of the few souvenirs I still have from the school and it's just a sticker that was on my door this actually survived uh, my childhood home's house fire so it's a little blemished but that's one of the stickers that uh, from the school